Okay, so let me just uh, uh, begin. So first of all, thank you very much uh, for um, giving me the opportunity to present. And uh, uh, I would like to present the talk about uh, ontology-based uh, presentation and analysis of vaccine immune response data in import. So this is a, a funded project. Uh, it's UH02. So the project goal is to do secondary data analysis on the import data. So import uh, is a database uh, funded by NIAID, uh, a part of NIH. So this work uh, is a collaborative effort between our University of, Med of Michigan Medical School and Oregon Health and Science University, and then UPenn and uh, Duke University. So first, I will put some outline here. I will introduce the input and uh, some research background we have. And then uh, we focus on vaccine. The input has more than vaccine, has uh, many other immune uh, response data. And then we will introduce how we can use ontology to model and represent the vaccines and uh, immune responses and the experimental data and how we can put them together. And then we can uh, also uh, extract the data, the annotation data from input. And meanwhile, we can extract data from GEO, gene expression database. And then we can uh, magically put the, the two data sets there together because one is more focused on annotation, one is more focused on gene expression data. So we can put them together using ontology, and then we can do some gene expression analysis. So we are going to show you how our ontology based uh, system work out. Then we have uh, two use cases to present. So first of all, I like to uh, introduce import. So import means immunology database and analysis portal. So it's an NIAID supported project. It's all like uh, immunology uh, related data. So the core idea of import is uh, they systematically annotate uh, experimental data and the metadata that uh, describe the studies and the methods of different data. So uh, that's a requirement for all uh, NIH-funded uh, uh, immunology studies. They should uh, deposit their data, if any, into the system. Uh, so this is uh, the general data model uh, from uh, import. So yeah, it's relatively small, but uh, you can see uh, we have the uh, in, we have the immune exposure, which uh, really contains the vaccination study, uh, and then the immune exposure uh, vaccination is given to human subject. They are all human data here we are dealing with. And then the human subjects are part of arm or cohort. So arm means like a cohort or a group of studies. And then each human subject has biosamples. So one human subject can have multiple biosamples and at different times, maybe before vaccination or after vaccination. And after vaccination, it can be like one day, three days, seven days, 28 days. So, uh, and then you can uh, look for experimental samples, right? Like uh, have a blood sample or some other samples. And then with the samples, then you can do an experiment. So the experiment can be like uh, uh, microarray, RNA-seq or ELISA, flow cytometry. So it's all kind of data uh, that can be used uh, to study. Them. So you can see it's a, it's a big data. So uh, import database uh, is more like a regional database. They do have uh, Excel uh, kind of uh, downloadable uh, sheets for us to easily see, but the data is huge. Uh, so here we can see uh, in as of May 7th, they have 2,401 immune exposures. And the majority, more than half of them are vaccination data, but they also have like a disease data, like a flu. So uh, somebody got a flu or they, uh, 
they probably can get the samples and then they can analyze it. Uh, so most of them are human data, but they do have lab animal data, yeah. And then for vaccination data, they have vaccine data, and we uh, look at it. There were 33 vaccines and uh, more than 2,000 human subjects and more than 100 cohort studies. So then we look for the metadata, uh, the uh, immune exposure data. So this is a typical sheet, it's very long. So I just uh, uh, shortcut a screenshot, uh, a part of it. So you can see uh, in input data analysis, they have already used VO. So VO is the vaccine ontology. So now has been being a standard for many studies. Uh, and uh, NIH input, they adopt the VO. So periodically, uh, they uh, ask us, because we are the VO, a developer and maintainer, they ask us to add a new import of vaccines to our system if we don't have it, and then they can put it into the system. So in this study, you can see a lot of uh, subjects, each of the row is a, a human subject, so they have an arm, and then vaccinated with a VO ID representing a specific vaccine, and then they have uh, uh, different IDs, so you can go through other tables to find more detail. So here I'd like to introduce uh, the vaccine ontology. It's a community-based uh, oval uh, foundry library uh, ontology in the domain of vaccination. And it's uh, also the reference ontology that uh, covers a lot, covers uh, currently over 3,000 uh, vaccines. So basically all licensed vaccines we can find uh, in USA, uh, Europe, and around the world. And in addition, we also have uh, vaccines that are in clinical trials and the vaccines that have been experimentally verified effective against uh, some infection, at least in some lab animal model. So this is more like experimental evidence to show it's working. And then this one is just one example to show uh, like a, a typical uh, flu vaccine. So we have many flu vaccines. So this is one typical example. So you can see this is uh, Afluria. And then we have label. We also have a cross reference to some like uh, NIH CVX IDs. And then you can see you know, it has the quality. Like in here is a vaccine organ organism inactivated. So it means it's a, it's a killed inactivated vaccine. And then you have you know, other role like uh, you know, other components and any possible uh, event, adverse event and the control indication, et cetera. And then as I said, we, have, we had uh, 33 vaccines uh, started in import. And then we look for all the vaccine IDs, right? And then we can use uh, Ontofocus, a tool that can extract all the vaccines and their relations among the vaccines. So you can have a hierarchy. So you can see, okay, now we have bacterial vaccine, viral vaccine, and the viral vaccine, we have influenza vaccine, and then many other vaccines, like a smallpox, uh, yellow fever. So you can see clearly, uh, they are somehow like uh, uh, organized uh, very well. And some more details actually can provide it, have been provided by VO. Uh, I'm not showing uh, more information here. So then we have a hypothesis. So then we want to see, okay, we want to look for uh, the import data and see if we can use ontology, not only VO, right? Not only vaccine, but also uh, possibly other ontological representation of other information in input. And if we can use those things and then further uh, enhance our understanding and analysis of the import uh, vaccine data. So then uh, I want to present uh, our workflow here. So one thing I want to uh, say is, uh, uh, import has uh, uh, more standardized and rich annotation. However, import does not have uh, real gene expression data. It has flow cytometry data, has uh, 
uh, other data, but they don't have gene expression data. So it's because uh, uh, all the data, all the gene expression data has been stored in GEO. So both are funded by NIH, right? So they don't want to compete with each other. So that's kind of uh, somehow awkward, but uh, that's the design. So uh, input has more annotation, has a rich annotation, but do not have data. And then if we go to GEO, so GEO has raw data, but they have less annotation. So the idea we want to have is like, uh, we want to use ontology to make a, a bridge, right? So to bridge the two things together and then to better analyze data. So how we do it? Uh, before I show how we can integrate two sources of data, I want to present uh, the VIO. So VIO means uh, uh, Vaccine Investigating Ontology. So its focus is to classify and analyze uh, different uh, vaccine responses given different experimental conditions. And we had some studies we show even it's the same vaccine given different uh, conditions, the results, the gene expression results can be different. So you can use ontology to represent the standardized classifying different uh, experimental conditions and see how those can affect the results. So VIO extends the vaccine ontology and uh, it has been shown to be uh, effective and useful uh, in some yellow fever vaccine studies. So this work is more focused on uh, influenza. And this work focuses on uh, using the uh, import data previously, yellow fever, we didn't use import data, it's all digital data. And this one is the uh, diagram of VIO, how it can be used to uh, represent uh, uh, vaccine investigation data. Yeah, it's a little bit busy, so but I can briefly introduce it. Uh, first of all, we have the vaccine, right? So, uh, left uh, bottom side, and then uh, you have vaccine ID, and then actually it can give all the information below. So you, you can see viral or bacteria, so you can identify those, and then uh, each vaccine can actually tell you, like, oh, it's alive, or uh, attenuated, or it's killed. So basically, uh, you just giving one real ID, you can handle all the left bottom side. And then, you no, know, the vaccine is given uh, through vaccination. The vaccination, you know, at a different frequency, and, diff and you can have a different uh, route, right? It's like uh, intranasal or, or others, uh, like uh, intramuscular. And then, the vaccination is given to a uh, human subject. The human subject has a gene, and then those kind of genes can have up and down, so you can do analysis. And then the human can have different uh, uh, features, right? Like uh, sex, gender, age. Yeah, you can have those kind of things. And then uh, the human is part of a human cohort. So somehow using ontological representation, we can bring all together. So uh, by having all the exercise, then we want to address uh, two questions, two use cases to demonstrate uh, how really ontology work can help. So the first one is like, uh, okay, can we kind of like, uh, uh, query, analyze uh, vaccines and uh, vaccine investigation data? Because as we said, the input data said, they only give ID, right? They only give vaccine ID, uh, vaccine ontology ID. They don't give anything else. So if I want to say, oh, I want to know which uh, vaccines are life attenuated, which are killed, they don't give you by nature, right? But uh, since they have vaccine ontology ID, we can map the ID to vaccine ontology, right? And the vaccine ontology actually provides all the detail. So for example, just give one example, as a flu mist, you know, it's uh, live attenuated uh, flu vaccine because it has a quality of the uh, vaccine organism live attenuated. And then fluoric, you know, is inactivated. So by doing uh, all kind of uh, association, you know, which is already done in VO, and we can do some query and analysis. So this is just one example. So it's more like an ideal query. Uh, then you can just 
you know, use uh, uh, reasoning, right? Like uh, uh, some reason to run it, then you can find, uh, okay, so, uh, no, like flu mist is live attending vaccine, and then three others are inactivated vaccine. So by nature, those things are not assigned here, but I think they have the quality that we can do reasoning and assign them. So uh, it can also be done using Sparkle uh, and uh, other uh, software. So it's just a simple one use case. And the second use case is more dealing with the raw data, which is the uh, instance data. And then we want to bridge uh, input annotation with uh, GEO uh, gene expression data. So as I said, import has good annotation, but do not have gene expression data. GEO has raw data, but uh, do not have uh, uh, the good annotation. So we want to test uh, two groups. One is live attenuated, one is uh, inactivated influenza group. So having the previous use case one, we know uh, in this case, you, know, you can separate the different uh, viruses right, into live and killed uh, vaccines. So then it's kind of using VO already. Then how to bring the two things together, and uh, it's uh, something we mentioned before, uh, basically we rely on the uh, import rich annotation, we standardize them using VIO ontology, and then after you standardize them, you can develop sort of program to automatically extract uh, the raw data from the uh, geo database, and we have a standardized uh, Lima software uh, like a uh, program, uh, program to run it, and then we can you know, get uh, the results. So you can see the results here. You can see uh, we have live and we have killed. So you have two killed and one live. And then you can compare the results. You can find that some genes are shared by live, uh, some genes are shared by by killed, and uh, some genes uh, basically uh, kind of intersection. And uh, then uh, you can make sense of results. So we plan this certain things that is working, and we plan to use this certain to do all 33 uh, or do more at least with separate groups. So then the other people will be more like a uh, science force paper, and this paper is more technical paper. And we can show uh, at least a uh, proof of concept to show the certain is working very well. So it's more than just using GEO. And the input does give a lot of good value to the whole annotation. So uh, to summarize uh, uh, the work, uh, basically I showed uh, uh, the uh, input uh, uh, data can be identified using ontology, like uh, using VO for the vaccine uh, representation. So that one actually has been done by import. However, import does not uh, use ontology to deal with many other pieces of information. So we propose to use VIO to look for all kinds of other information. And then by using so, we can kind of do a lot of annotation and uh, then we can link the, the annotation to the gene, gene ontology, I mean GEO, gene pain data, and then do automatic pipeline. So we have made the pipeline available and uh, we showed a uh, use uh, demonstration, and it seems like uh, the whole certain is working. And we plan to apply this to do more comprehensive thorough study on the vaccine studies, and we can separate them into different uh, categories, and hopefully can identify more scientific insights. So I think uh, that's uh, my uh, story, and I would like uh, to recommend to uh, acknowledge the funding uh, UH to a grant from NIAID. Thank you. Thanks, Oliver. So, um, anybody have questions for Oliver? Um, I, I, I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, Oliver, so um, it seems like you are just adding some vaccine annotations you mean adding the value to the GEO data set? And then I'm wondering, how do you uh, treat the GEO data set? Because um, there are, I think one data, 
if you extract one record from GEO, they are a group of the subject uh, level data. So you are treating um, what it's, yeah, I don't know if you understand okay. me correctly. I'm asking, are you integrate the individual level data or you just integrate the GEO level data? Maybe that is. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a good question. So, uh, yeah, we we have two type of uh, uh, integration, right? So, um, uh, in our study, the yeah, the geo data really also they have the minimal information data, right? But the all data often is just uh, you know hidden and embedded in, in the text format, so. So our integration, so the two two levels, I would think. One is the metadata level, right? So you can see, okay, we integrate them in like a, in biological sex or age, right, or gender. So those kind of integration is, uh, as you 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 know, like ontology is very good at it, yeah. And then another another yeah, so so import is doing very well, so we might better than GEO. So we are relying on input and do automatic annotation. So this is one level of, of integration. So another level of integration is more like uh, the, the raw data, the genes plane data one. So how to normalize the data, right? Across uh, different studies. So that is uh, you know, sometimes tricky because uh, you can say, oh, how I would uh, like to compare the data, right? So that is more gene expression data level. So the current study, you know, what we sh we show you is more like uh, we we do uh, we do the gene expression statistic analysis, you know, in individual studies. So everything is compared to control to I mean before vaccination. So every every vaccine every vaccine response data is compared with the, the you know, its own, each cohort study has its own control. So we can identify which genes are up or down, right? So, and then, you no, know, we, we set it down there. And then we can do many, right? Let's say you, if we do 10 studies, then we compare with the gene list. So that's one thing. And another thing we are doing now is kind of uh, do normalization across uh, different uh, studies. So at the data level, you can you can do more analysis. So and the third one, we also have uh, some good results. So uh, yeah, not sure if I have answered your question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We can discuss more later, but I think I kind of uh, I got your idea. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oliver, I, I have a question about your use case number two, uh, where you looked at the uh, the difference between attenuated and you know, killed viruses. And from those, one of the, the expression data set has differentially expressed gene of or, or more than 9,000 up and down. So pretty much all, most of the genes, yes. I, I wonder what, I, I might have missed that. What, what kind of a differential analysis method you use and is it getting this many number of genes differential? Is it kind of reasonable in this study? Yeah, sure. So uh, we basically use uh, uh, a program called the Lima. Uh, so we, uh, so this is, uh, uh, this number is, uh, is relatively high because uh, I think the one reason is uh, we use a union rather than intersection. You no, know? I mean, in, in this case, just for one vaccine, right? So uh, so you have a pre-vaccination, so it's more like a control. And then you have uh, post-vaccination data. Let's say you have three days, seven days, right? And uh, let's say the two, two days, you may have one day, one day, three days, seven days. So uh, each uh, uh, data set, each, uh, at each time you can pair with the control, right, with the previous nation. Then you get, uh, you, you may get hundreds of genes different, right? And then, you know, for the three days, we basically 
we put them together. So we have the intersection data. The intersection data is much less, but in here it's like, uh, if any gene is uh, uh, significantly increased, uh, I think here we, we use only increased data. If any gene is significantly increased, uh, oh yeah, we have, we have up and down. Any gene is significantly increased or down, down regulated at any date you know, is considered as, as one gene to be counted yeah, here. Yeah. And so yeah. Oliver, um, yeah. Well, then, then in this case, when you are thinking about up or down regulated, you are thinking, uh, given the one um, GO um, record. So in one GO record, there is control and uh, the uh, vaccination group. So if you in one record, there is a uh, upgrade comparing to the control in that experiment, then you count it as a up regulated. Right. Okay, okay. That's I what think, we do, yeah. Yeah, I think, did you look at the study design, like if the patient cohort they are matching, because this is, looks, I think move it forward, you can do some meta-analysis for gene, geo expression, uh, experiment data. I think there are established methods for this kind of thing. But then you need to match the population, I, I, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, there are, there are different ways to do it. Yeah, thank you, yeah.